Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, Dragon Age Origins from Bioware. Um, this was released way back in December 2009 for the PC and um, <clears throat> it was uh, one of the first games from Bioware to be falling under the infamous EA banner. Um, you can't really tell that much, I think it's probably because the game was way in development before uh, they got acquired by EA, so we're quite safe here I think. Um, anyway, let's take a look at this rather fantastic role playing game. Dragon Age Origins takes place in the mythical realm of Ferelden. This is very much a Tolkien inspired realm, where it wouldn't be unlikely to run into the occasional dwarf, dragon and other mythical creature. Um, as the name suggests, Origins, uh, the first part of the game plays out as an origin story for your character. Um, the playthrough that you'll see here, um, I'm playing as a warrior class and um, as a nobleman whose family uh, falls on harder times as a result of a coup. Um, but I also played through on the Xbox 360 as a mage where you start off in a huge tower and you have to do a variety of different magical based trials. Um, it's uh, it's certainly a great way to start off a game and it allows for fantastic replayability and the story is unique for each of these different characters. Um, as far as the game as aesthetics are concerned, it's um, it's definitely high fantasy. Um, there's no beating around the bush here. This is uh, they're, they're not trying to make it trendy. They're not trying to make it cool. It is what it is, <laughs> and uh, it's all the better for it, in my opinion. Um, the general story is that um, the blight has returned. Now, the blight is uh, um, caused by these creatures called the darkspawn, who um, were once mages and um, sorcerers who then fell um, after being corrupted trying to seek out magic that they shouldn't really be seeking and um, they were corrupted by the more evil powers uh, the biggest of which being the archdemon who comes to life in the form of a dragon um, the grey wardens are a group of individuals who are sworn to defend the realm whenever a blight comes across and um, the origin story will always end with you joining the Grey Wardens um, after you meet a guy called Duncan um, who's voiced by the same voice actor who did uh, uh, the leader of the Assassin's Guild in Assassin's Creed 1 so it's quite recognisable in terms of his voice. Um, the story is very strong um, it, you know this is the bread and butter of any good RPG and there are twists and turns um, you'll meet all manner of strange people along the way and um, no, nobody's really as they seem so you're intrigued throughout the game and this this means that the, you are likely to play through its uh, 30 plus hour campaign um, also the side quests are interesting as well yes they are fetch quests but they're always uh, disguised pretty well and most quests have a significant payoff whether it be with loot or story elements I've been placed here by the Chantry I am Sten of the Beresad, the vanguard of the Kunari peoples. You mock me, or you show manners I have not come to expect in your lands. For anybody who's played any sort of previous Bioware RPG which uh, existed before Mass Effect, you're going to be right at home here. Uh, I'm talking to the uh, Knights of the Old Republic crowd here. Um, most of the things that you're able to do within the game are very similar to that in that you have a party which um, often accompanies you. You can, you can play solo, uh, but um, those are for just uh, scripted areas of the game and um, you control them all independently and this is done by a mixture of both real-time and strategic combat. Um, you can pause the game at any time by pressing the spacebar um, and you can then uh, <laughs> you can then allot all your different um, uh, skills, magic and all that kind of stuff uh, towards attacks in a tactical manner. Uh, the PC version has a benefit of being able to zoom all the way out. Um, this is something that the console versions could not do. And it does help in some instances, particularly when you're being surrounded by um, a bunch of enemies. Um, it's um, it's quite good in that um, for smaller groups of enemies, which you know you're going to be able to kick ass, 
um, you can pretty much do it real time and just allow the, the uh, CPU to uh, deal with all of your companions in quite an efficient way um, and you can plow through them. Also there are tactic slots, slots as well so you can um, assign different um, abilities to your companions. Do you want one person to be the healer? Do you want pers one person to be defensive? Do you want another to be aggressive? And this does come in handy, particularly when you're dealing with huge groups as well. Um, I, I, I must confess it can get a bit overwhelming at times, particularly towards the end of the game. Um, when, it, when you're about to fight the Archdemon, you've got to go through uh, waves and waves of enemies. And it can get rather <laughs> you know, uh, heated in terms of, will I make it to the checkpoint? Uh, alive. No matter how many health pulses you have, it, it never seemed to be enough. Um, but overall, it's it's a really good battle system. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of turn-based RPGs, and this is a nice compromise. It's somewhere between the two. It's not hack and slash. You're not going to be bashing away at the X button on a controller. Instead, you're going to have to think tactically uh, about what moves to use and what people. And it's as deep as you want it to be. You could go through the whole game with just, you know, picking willy-nilly. But you may come a cropper a couple of times. Um, also, it's got a quite good infantry system. I mean, this is an inventory system of the old school. Lists and uh, descriptions are abound. Um, and uh, it's easy to manage, although it will often become full. But there, you, there is a convenient way of destroying materials that you don't need. Um, also, it allows you to allot all the different gear to your uh, parties, uh, something which Dragon Age 2 did not allow you to do. Um, I'm not going to mention Dragon Age 2 too much as it makes me want to vomit. Quite literally, it makes me want to vomit. Uh, when you compare it to the gameplay in this game, there is so much depth here. It is uh, unreal to describe. Uh, there are so many books and... and uh, um, uh, extracts of law and it, you get the feeling that this is a very very deep world and it was crafted over a long period of time um, the but when you're uh, interacting with people um, it's got a very sort of Mass Effect style way of handling dialogue um, it's not as black and white as Mass Effect you know you're not going to have the uh, Paragon blue and the um, Renegade red options it, it doesn't it doesn't behave that way instead it's a bit more subtle and again it's all the better for it um, you can persuade people you can intimidate them um, but sometimes that you might get an outcome that you weren't expecting overall the gameplay in the game is really really strong um, I think it caters well to people who are unfamiliar with this type of RPG um, in that it does provide good tutorials and, and it does explain itself incredibly well. Some of these types of RPGs don't do that and they put you in at the deep end. And as a result, many people get to a certain place and they, they just give up. Um, not so with Dragon Age. It's, it's really well thought through. And I really can't find too many negatives when it comes to the gameplay in this game. It, it's all rather strong. Um, I'm, I am coming from a background of Knights of the Old Republic, so I was able to slip into this game really easily. There is also an in-depth crafting system within the game as well. Um, not so much for your armour and weapons, although you can go to a blacksmith and get that done. Um, it's um, more to do with um, alchemy and well, what we call herbalism here. You can also create poisons and traps which you can use. Um, be, having, having somebody with this type of skill is really useful later on in the game when <laughs> you, you, you're going to run out of um, health pulses and um, also um, lyrium. Uh, potions as well. Lyrium is, is what the mages use to enhance their power. Um, it acts like mana, um, just under a different name really. Um, but again, it's just in depth enough. I think most of the features here are fleshed out to the optimum um, sense that they, they, they're neither too overwhelming and complicated, but they're not overly simplistic. So this is, this is definitely a plus point as far as the gameplay is concerned. We'll leave! We'll do whatever you want! Just... just... no more! The presentation in Dragon Age Origins is quite strong, despite of itself. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Um, this game is using the old-school uh, Bioware in-house Eclipse engine. 
Um, and by this point, it was really showing its age. Um, even on the PC, you've got muddy textures. Um, character animations aren't as great as you would want them to be. Um, there are a few copy and paste dungeons, um, but it has got a, a unique style of its own. In that, uh, it's a nice, colourful world in areas. Uh, it's gloomy where it needs to be. You know, if you're in a swamp or something like that. But in general, it's quite a pretty place to be at. It's got some very muted, pastel-y sort of colours. But it's it's definitely a, a nicer experience than what you would probably find in 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 uh, the average shooter. Um, as far as the character models are concerned, again, they're quite well designed, although you do get a bit of repetition here and there, and the hair is 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 quite funny at times in, in that it looks rubbish. Um, it's, it's probably because this game had quite a long period in development. I remember hearing about this for years, and... Um, and that that could be a result of it to be honest but it's serviceable it's not ugly <laughs> but it's not outstanding um, don't expect too many dy dynamic shadows or anything like that here um, the the graphics are serviceable and they do the job pretty well the conversations look okay but again there's a lot of things that could have had just that extra level of polish on the PC sound wise this is a great game. The score is as epic as you would want it to be. Uh, it's mournful in areas. It's um, quite heart pumping during the battles, particularly towards the end of the game. And the dialogue that's that's uh, spoken within the game by the voice actors is strong. It, it doesn't come across as being cheesy. And it's got a great sense of humor at times. Uh, some of the standout performances come from um, uh, people like Claudia Black, who plays the sultry uh, uh, Morrigan, um, who you never quite know whose side she's on, um, but you want to be on her side. She's, she's quite a sexy character in that in that sense, um, if a computer game character can be sexy. Um, but in general, I don't think I came across one voice um, other than the ginger-haired um, uh, companion that you have who has a lisp, which just drove me nuts. Uh, talks like this all the time. Um, it's a bit weird that they would do that, but, you know, it's, I guess, you know, diversity, you've got to have somebody with a speech impediment. Um, it's it's really strong in terms of its sound design. It, you know the clashing of the armor and the sounds of the spells, and it, it really is quite a, an abject lesson in terms of how to score and how to um, produce sound effects for this type of game. Yes, Denerim is Ferelden's most important city. Yes. The game itself is is it looks quite old, um, and as a result, you would think, okay, I can play this on pretty much anything. I wouldn't suggest that. Um, it, you can play it on. I tried it on integrated graphics on my HD three thousand, which is part of my i seven chip, and I was able to get hovering around just under thirty frames um, with some AA on and everything on full. So that gives you a sort of benchmark as to what you can expect. Um, if you've got a dedicated uh, graphics card, like say a mid-range card from say the 640 to uh, maybe the 650 um, in terms of NVIDIA cards, then you're going to be able to play around with the resolution. Um, you'll be able to bump it up higher than 720p um, or you'll be able to add some bells and whistles like AA and AF. Um, on a high range card like my 6 and 5M or beyond, uh, it's a 60 frames a second game easily. Um, that's with everything on. Um, what you're viewing here is a scaled down 720p um, uh, video, but everything is on high, including AA, which I've got all the way up to 8, and AF, which is also on 16. Um, it doesn't add an awful much, uh, awful much to the game. Um, it just cleans up the edges a bit. Some textures are also a bit crisper. But you know, having played the Xbox 360 version, the main thing that you're going to get in terms of advantage is load times, and um, also some of the textures are a bit better, and also the AA work is obviously better. But all in all, it should run on on pretty much anything that has a reasonable GPU. 
Um, it's not one of those games which is, is doing an awful lot of flashy things. So um, it could be one of those games that you could just use on an integrated trip chip, albeit it would have to be quite a powerful one. Silence! I will not have you two becoming smart-mouthed hooligans! As you can tell, I quite like this game. Um, it goes back to the old school. It goes back to the, um, the Knights of the Old Republic from Bioware, which I have fond memories of. And it adds a few things here and there. Um, particularly the refining of the party system. Um, I really like that. Uh, the graphics haven't dated all that well already. I mean, <laughs> it's only, what, a four-year-old game and it already looks a bit dated. But the sound design, the characterization, the story, everything is pure Bioware gold, the way we used to remember it. Um, there are some EA things that creep in here. First of all, you're going to have to sign into your EA or Origin account if you're going to bloody play it properly. Um, Secondly, and rather distastefully, um, somewhere in the game it, there's a place called the campsite where you normally converse with your team and find out more about them. There's a guy there peddling his wares and you think, oh, I'll go over there and see what he's on about and he talks about some missions. Yep, it, it's missions you have to buy. They're selling it in-game. Um, bloody disgusting. I, I, I just, you know, and it will stay forever in your... Um, in your in tray of things to do. Um, I mean, even even the amount of tea I've had in my rather fantastic Doctor Who mug cannot calm me down. Um, I still get really pissed off over this sort of stuff. I mean, they, Rene, Rene, they released a Dragon Age Awakening, which is a proper expansion. As, a, as an expansion, why did they have to do this? God knows, but it's typical EA. We should have seen it as a sign of things to come. But anyway, back to the game. Great game, really enjoy it, even to this day, playing it again, remembered how great the storyline was, how uh, fantastic the characters are, I don't think there's one annoying character other than Lisp Girl, you know, um, so all in all, 5.0 uh, 5 out of 5, I mean it's the 5 out of 5 game, always will be as far as I'm concerned. Um, it, it doesn't do much to sort of enhance the genre, but it doesn't do anything to detract from it. And anybody who's played the sequel to this game will know that this is a far superior game. And um, sometimes we just want some straight fantasy role-playing game. You know, it, 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 it really doesn't matter. We just want that. And this delivers it in spades. It's really cheap now. I would advise anybody to get it. Um, it's cert certainly, you know, was worthy of the game of the year um, accolades that it got and um, I might try Awakening now I never tried Awakening so I, I might I might purchase that now and, and give that a go anyway um, I'm the Laptop Gamer and I'll see you next time